And if you don't bloom, you are going in the trash, going in the trash, going in the trash. Hey guys, it's me Astrid, and today I wanted to give you an update on a few of my plants and orchids. Because uh, you guys always ask me for updates on stuff, and then I'm like, what? I forgot about it. Um, so I'd like to make this update on a few plants, and I would also like to open up a forum of questions for you guys. If you want me to update you on any particular plant that I didn't cover in this video, let me know in the comments and I'll try to make a video next week with updates on those plants. So if you're curious about any plants, um, I'll try really hard to make a video actually updating on those. So let me know. You can hold me accountable now because I said my words in a video. So without further ado, let's get started on some plant updates. So the first plant I wanted to update you guys on is my Amaryllis La Paz. Um, I've learned from gardening at Duenza that this is actually a hippiastrum, thanks to her lovely videos. I think the difference between Amaryllis and hippiastrum is their continents of origin. I think hippiastrum comes from Southern Africa or South Africa and um, Amaryllis comes from South America, but don't quote me on that and I'll correct the info below if I learn anything new before I publish this. So I know I showed you the bulb and me potting this a few months ago and I wanted to talk about it really quick. First of all, the flowers were really pretty, but as far as I'm concerned, they were kind of stringy. Now I got them because they had this beautiful like long spidery appearance, but when they were in bloom and I saw it, it was actually a little bit of a letdown. Now gardening at Duenza has a Hippiastrum papilio and that one has these beautiful wide petaled flowers that really make a statement. This one was kind of a letdown for me. As pretty as it is and as pink as it is, it's, it's really lovely, but at the same time, the spidery flowers didn't do it for me. I haven't had any fungus gnats in my house since I switched over to semi-hydroponic. Ever since I got rid of the bark and most of the sphagnum moss, I haven't had the, the problem of them being around, but now they're back and it's because of this hippiastrum. So, can't say I love it, um, can't say I would do any more again, but I can say that it was really easy. It was a nice uh, big display and a pretty interesting plant all in all. I'm glad I tried it. So the next plant I wanted to give you an update on was this Dendrobium Proud Appeal Ace. Um, this plant, if you remember last summer, I got 50% off at a nursery and I repotted it for you guys into semi-hydroponic. Um, and I can say that it's doing really well. Both divisions are doing pretty well. I'll start off with the le seemingly less healthy division and uh, give you a look-see at it. So here we've got all this really good root growth into the semi-hydroponic medium. I don't often pull the plants out of the tubs and look at them, so I don't even get to appreciate the roots all the time. But as you can see, there's hella roots. Um, also, this plant has put off a really nice, healthy new growth. You can see this is a nice fat cane since I repotted it. Here's another nice fat cane. And if you remember before, and I'll try to find a clip to show you, this was a really shriveled up sad looking plant. So I saw something that I knew could be salvaged. I took it and I took a risk on it and it did really well. Here's the other half of this plant. It's also doing really well with like nice roots in here. Here's a nice squiggly one going through the Lica pellets. Um, here's a nice stranger bitch plant in my pot. Get out. <laughs> and it's doing really well. Now this one has the best new growth. Look at, look at this. Let's try to get it separated up. Look at this big monster cane. That is nice and healthy. I didn't even expect this plant to get that big. I'm a little concerned it might be a really large plant. We'll see, but it made this nice, healthy new growth in amongst all these other ones. And after repotting, even its older growths that were less healthy, they have plumped back up from being really wrinkled. So that's good. So that's the Dendrobium Proud Appeal Ace. I still don't really know what the blooms look like, but I think they're supposed to be pink and we'll see if this ever blooms for me. The next plant I wanted to update you on is my Galliandra Batemanii. This one actually made a pretty nice recovery from what it was. Um, as you can see, this 
shriveled pseudobulb, like shriveled down to a quarter of its original size, was able to put out this whole growth. Now I think this growth is about a quarter of the size that it should be at a, at a good um, size for a Galliandra that's been coming in. Um, but I'm really impressed with this recovery it made. If you watched my video before you saw that I put this in sphagnum moss and I just gave it generous water throughout its growing season and now I'm forcing it into a dormancy period by stopping the water. If you'll note, it's not shriveling now that I've stopped watering, and this is some pretty darn dry sphagnum moss, but it's doing really well, and I hope uh, it'll put out a new growth for me and I can repot it in some fresh moss. So that's how that one's doing. Okay, so the next plant I wanted to update you guys on is my Brassocatlia green bird. This one, here's one of its fallen, dried up little flowers. I made a special video on it a long time ago. Um, but this one uh, made an amazing recovery from being at death's door recently. Um, I've been trying to recover this for like almost two years and it put out not one but two flower spikes for me this fall. You guys might remember I broke one off, oops, but the other one bloomed and it gave me one flower and it smelled so good and I really look forward to the fact that it's going to put out more flowers in the future and I hope to grow this into a nice big specimen. Over the winter for some reason the leaves have been turning really really purple in the under growing under the lights. I don't really know why. You can see it's really green on this side and really purple on this side. Um, but yeah it's got some nice healthy roots and um so pleased with the recovery this has made. I thought I was gonna have to chuck it. The next plant I want to update you on is my Cattleya Chocolate Drop Kodama that I got uh, I think also about two years ago. This one has made some amazing roots, like really amazing, like this amazing of roots. This orchid has a tendency to just reach its little roots out of the pot and crawl them every which way it pleases. Like look at this. Talk about some root porn, right guys? This plant is so touchy-feely I put a consent is sexy button on it because it's just touching all the other plants without asking. It's very rude. Um, one thing to notice on this is that look at this growth right here. So the this is the newest growth. And this is the second newest growth. This one grew nice and tall but the leaves were kind of stringy and small on it. You see how small those are? So I can tell maybe it wasn't getting enough light or something. Now this newer growth, the growth is shorter, this is longer, and the leaves are broader and fuller. Can you see that big difference in the leaf size? So when plants start growing more compact and making these nice big leaves, nice broad leaves instead of skinny ones, it means they're getting enough light. So as far as everything is concerned with this plant, I think it's doing really well. It's got all these new root tips coming in here. Um, this thing I'm gonna have to cut off real soon because it's gonna stick to everything. Um, but this plant is getting everything it needs. Now I hope maybe this year it's gonna bloom for me, but we'll see. It has gorgeous blooms. Next plant. The last plant I want to update you guys on is my Sideria or Phalaenopsis japonica. This one I put into semi-hydro a long time ago and it's just been kind of sitting doing like I don't know nothing for ages. It'll put out leaves and its leaves have been coming out nice and broad, not quite so long and lanky as they did before, but more broad, which means it's probably getting enough light. And it's put out a lot of nice roots. You can see the new root tip right in there. Um, and it's got roots going down the pot, but it hasn't, this darn thing hasn't bloomed for me yet. I don't know how to get this thing to bloom. I figure I'll just take care of it until it grows a million and a half roots and then it will put out a flower because it feels so healthy. But I honestly, I don't know. I haven't fertilized any of my plants in like, in like a year because I've been really lazy. And um, I haven't, I've given this a lot of light. Like this takes um, light equal to maybe my cat layers it takes. It sits right in with my catacetums right now and it's still not blooming. So I don't know what to do, but I think we'll give it more time. 
One thing I do want to say about the Sideria japonica is that um, I don't know why people say it rots for them. This one, clear. I mean, clearly, it hasn't rotted for me. I get water in the crown all the time. I, like, don't water it for a long time. I'll go through phases where I water it daily because, you know, and I think the reason it doesn't rot for me is I have good air circulation. I don't know why other people's have been rotting for them, but for me, this has been an easy plant to grow, relatively speaking. Um, not so easy to bloom, but we'll see if that changes in the next year. So how's that for a plant update? I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I know I've been pretty sporadic with posting lately. Eh, life is lay busy, what can I say? But I've been taking care of my plants, I've been seeing new things, doing new things, and I'm really happy right now. So even if I don't have a good presence on YouTube, I'm still doing my thing. Um, and I got a What's in Bloom video coming up soon for you guys, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to comment below if you want an update on any of my plants. I'll try to put together a video sometime in the near future of those. Okay, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.